Hi everyone! Today I'm excited to show you the start of a new project, building a haunted country diorama that's perfect for Halloween. And I've had some help from ChatGPT to bring some ideas to life, and together we even drew out a few concept images for this project. These CGI graphics really help guide the layout, and I'll be using them as inspiration to build the scene. It's called Haunted Harvest, and it will feature a mix of Lexmark models, custom 125th scale model car builds, and a spooky Halloween market theme. Although the CGI did not fully capture what I was writing to it in text, there are a lot of really awesome elements in each of these drawings that I can use in building my own diorama. The CGI also included many interesting elements that I would not have thought of otherwise, so I'm glad that it did take a little bit of liberty and bring me up some new ideas with its artistic license. In this introductory video, I will show you the models and the setup that I'm planning on using. So let's dive right in. I've decided to go with a 12 inch by 24 inch styrofoam board as the base. This will be the foundation for our haunted harvest scene. Here on the left, I've set up an old pickup truck filled with pumpkins in the back. The tailgate is down with more pumpkins scattered in front and a few set on a table, creating a little pumpkin carving and selling scene. To add some spooky characters, I'm placing a skeleton next to the truck, along with a Lexmark pumpkin patch ghoul sitting on a tombstone. They're the stars of this haunted market. Further down the right, I've added some room for more elements like the Lemax Crow Club and, of course, some classic jack-o'-lanterns. This is the rough layout of an idea that I have in my mind. For the base, I'll be using a model train grass mat instead of applying individual flocking. This mat will cover the entire surface, making the process quicker and giving the diorama a consistent look. This grass mat used to be on one of my wargaming tables back in the day, and it's been sitting out in the sun for two years, which has made it pretty brittle. As you can see, it wants to shatter. So it is going to be a bit of a challenge to use this for the base, but I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. I've decided to go with a 12 by 24 inch styrofoam board as the base. Now I am going to cut this just a little bit shorter to allow for any thicknesses from the sidewall and back display of our project. So what I'm going to do is cut this at 11 and 3 quarters by 23 and 3 quarter inch. And that should make up for any thicknesses of the other board. This will be the foundation for our haunted harvest scene.
The grass mat will also help hide the wiring from the lighted elements, keeping everything neat. I'll be running the wires underneath and using the mat to cover them up seamlessly, just like this. I also have this very old roll of lifelike path mat dirt that I'll use for areas where I want to create more variety in the ground texture, like for the dirt paths in the pumpkin patch or around the spooky market stands. This combination of grass and dirt will really bring the haunted country vibe to life while keeping everything clean and tidy under the surface. I've got several lighted elements that will really bring this diorama to life at night, including glowing jack-o'-lanterns, spooky tree stumps, and a special spooky veil sign. One of my favorite features is the lighted stack skulls that will be placed strategically in the scene. They'll add an extra layer of spookiness and enhance the haunted atmosphere. The wires will be dug into the styrofoam base in trenches using my number 16 hobby blade and then covered with the grass mat so the setup stays neat and the lights will create a perfect eerie atmosphere. I'll also be careful to keep the power boxes hidden but easy to access for turning them on. I'm also adding a custom witch's brew booth inspired by the Limax Christmas Village newsstand. This booth will fit right into the Halloween market scene where the witches can sell their potions. I'll be including an Undertaker figure which adds a classic horror touch to the scene as he tends to the spooky tombstones. The tombstones will be scattered throughout the area creating an eerie graveyard vibe that fits perfectly with our haunted harvest theme. Model cars like the Little Coffin Show Rod and Carl Casper's Undertaker Dragster add a touch of classic Halloween style to the scene. These spooky vehicles are a fun addition and help round out the haunted country setting. For the pickup truck model, I've decided to go with AMT's 1953 Ford pickup truck. I really know this kit and I like it, and I think it would be the perfect choice for my diorama. Just to go with that old worn out vibe, I got this Extreme Weathered Vehicles Over Reality book, number two, from my old friend John Harry's. Unfortunately, John passed away recently, so I've been able to get some of his models and whatnot through his family, and this was one of the cool books that I found in the collection. I am thinking of weathering that 53 Ford pickup truck, which was also a model from my friend John, in a style similar to this one on the cover. Now, inside this big book, it's uh, got a lot of ways to do these techniques. So one of the things that I did do was just a practice on this engine block here. And you can see all the rust and grime effects and the worn out aluminum. I still need to put carburetors on where the bright chrome is. But overall, I think the techniques in here might prove quite handy in this haunted harvest diorama. While the truck and the main setup will stay permanent, I've left some space on the right side of the diorama where I can swap out models and accessories over time. This way the diorama can evolve with new elements each Halloween season. One thing that is cool about this board is that it measures 12 inches by 24 inches. Now if we take 1 25th scale and scale it up to 1 to 1 scale for the real world, that equals 25 feet by 50 feet. And the backdrop I want to use is 10 inches tall and that equals 20.83 feet or 250 inches. So that is a lot of room on this board here for many different elements of this model kit or this diorama I should say because each element is only a certain length like the cars are nine inches long for example. So that ends up being a lot of room on our board. If you have any fun ideas for seasonal changes or elements you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below. To really set the scene and give the diorama more depth, I'm going to be painting a backdrop and two side panels that will extend the scene out and make it more Halloween-y. I'll be cutting down this piece of foam core board into a 10 inch high backdrop that will frame the scene. The idea is to create a moody autumnal landscape. I'll paint a spooky forest with some bare trees, rolling hills in the distance, and maybe even add a foggy sky for that perfect Halloween atmosphere. I'll be using some dry brushing and layering techniques for the sky and stippling to create texture in the trees and foliage. 
This backdrop will not only enhance the look, but also help immerse the viewer in the Haunted Harvest theme idea. That's a Haunted Harvest diorama so far. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my layout on paper, the figures I'm going to add, and my ideas starting to take shape. In future videos, I will be showing you how I will decorate the base with paint, add a grass mat, route the wiring, touch up the paint on the Lexmark models, weather the vehicles, build the witch's potion stand, and of course, paint the backdrop. If you've got any more ideas for the scene, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss another great Halloween haunted idea. Also, don't forget to visit our online web store at www.monster-hobbies.ca for all your modeling needs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with more spooky ideas and projects. <laughs>